Greetings, Warlords. Welcome to Saga Thursday, the show all about the Skirmish Miniatures Game Universe from Studio Tomahawk. I am Raj, joined once again by my boon companion here, Monty. How are you? Raj, I'm doing super. How about yourself? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, weather's turning around, getting a little warmer. Yes, um, yes. I am a, extremely affected by uh, the spring weather. Monty, for like two months straight here, I'm just going to be humming tunes, skipping around the house, <laughs> and uh, looking forward to it. Same, um, same. The Midwest, though, I'm sure we'll have uh, another winter storm or two or three before oh, yeah. we're through, but looking forward to, to warmer times. We made it through. Yes. Um, so today we're going to do our usual stuff. And then we're going to circle back around and put a put a cap on our Age of Crusades Merc discussion. We're going to rehabilitate some of the the Mercs that uh, well, I won't say we spoke disparagingly of them, Monty, but uh, we just didn't have a lot to say about them and their place. So we're going to try to find a home for those. And then there were some Mercs that we didn't touch on because they weren't available to the the Ordenstadt. Or the pagan peoples, which is kind of the focus of that first discussion. So we're kind of circling back around, close it out. And I, I think that should be a, a good topic. Not too long, but uh, you never know with us, right? Yes, indeed. Once you get started. Mm -hmm. So uh, we start off with Saga News, of course. And there's actually... Uh, few different things going on here. Monty, why don't yes. you, we haven't discussed beforehand, but I think you know what I know. So what? what's the news out there? I think so. I was listening to the uh, Saga Ohio uh, uh, broadcast, podcast actually, and they said they have two events coming up in October. I remember one is CincyCon, I think, and the second one, I can't remember, but there were there are two. Okay, well, I was actually getting that part ready here the second one is uh, -oh. uh advance the colors springfield ohio okay. saturday october okay. 2nd and cincy con 2021 saturday october 23rd so both of those are in ohio october nice. yep sure surely monty we've got to be we got to be in the yeah. clear by then buddy <laughs> um actually Back my infinity event was scheduled for may and I pushed that off another year, but I did get uh, like a local Infinity ITS, like a, just a smaller store. I got it set up for October 9th. Nice. So I too am hopeful about the, the return to in person gaming here. That's going to be awesome. Same. Oh, um, yes, it will. Can't wait. Yeah. So thank you, Michael, for sending those over. And, um, have you been all caught up on those episodes? I think I am. That was it. I uh, I happened to get that. That was, I think, the seventh episode. So, yep, that gets me fully caught up. Mm -hmm. Well, it's funny, interesting, hearing about the different metas there and, uh, you know, kind of mm -hmm. how to do things. And, you know, the one guy just seems to have bad luck against the Yams Vikings. So, <laughs> all of a sudden, the Yams Vikings are the, the top of the heap. Right. Um, so, eh. Interesting to hear about. Yeah, Go over yes there, it give it a listen. Uh, you will find it entertaining for sure. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one little bit of news. Some more news. Uh, officially, Studio Tomahawk has posted a tantalizing photo of an Age of Invasions game. Mm -hmm. Monty, did you see that? I did. Big table. Looked like fun. Yeah, doing a big doubles type of game. And we saw some of the boards. We can get close enough, but the format is different. It follows the Age of Hannibal format with the two rows of five. So we know they got some new boards coming. And then mm -hmm. they, um, I, don't know, I don't know if they just said it in the post, but the Franks are coming. are going to be one of the new factions. Mm -hmm. So we had six originally. And then I think Grouping Beast teased that there was going to be two additional somehow. So it looks like Franks yep. will be one of them. Do you have any, any guesses for 
number eight there? Uh, oh, man. I do, but I also was told to not oh. say it. <laughs> Ooh, oh, wow. I know. More secret I know. Information. It's pretty people. I mean, can I say this? People will lose their minds. I mean, I shouldn't. That sounds. But I mean, they will love the, the secret one. That's maybe the best I can do just out of respect because it's big news. Oh, and I, wow. I was cool. and I've heard people chatter wanting this one and um, great models for it. I think people will be very happy. Oh, cool. Well, Does that count as me not? leaking the secret yeah it counts but okay. uh, you and me we're after a little chat after this <laughs> we, you want to keep this going yeah, uh, that's I really do. cool because it's interesting because the franks it, it's tough to say because they had a pretty expansive old friends new enemies section and okay. i believe the the franks were in there so i mean if you if you want the hot list the short list head on over there and see which ones are going to get promoted so I won't prod you any further, Monty, but uh, that, that would be my guess again. Is, yeah, yeah. is one of those yeah. ones. Uh, okay. Uh, the fact it's coming, Monty. Nice. Nice. Uh, Alex Bouchel, I believe, confirmed that himself on uh, a Facebook post or, or something. So we uh, know that's coming. And then lastly... The Hercus Monty channel. They've had the Crusades intro, introductory videos, and mm -hmm. I joined JP for the uh, rounding out of those war bands. We talked about the old friends, new enemies section, and uh, I think the first one to go up is Pagan Raiders. And I don't know if he included it or not in that video, and it might have been in the Huns video, and it might have got hit the floor, but. We referenced about well how the the new book is going to be coming out imminently because we're talking about those battle boards for our review. Uh, so the the Cumans use the Hun board and the Raiders use the the Saxon board, and we we're talking about the bad juju and how surely the, the uh, it's going to come out imminently and just invalidate our videos. So. Uh, you're welcome, everyone, for the service that we've done in accelerating the Age of Invasions book forward. But videos are fun. It's fun to talk about those uh, kind of different war bands, bad, different battle boards and different settings and stuff. And, you know, it is pretty different. You take a Vikings war band into the land of crossbows and cavalry, and it's not necessarily going to be the, the same war band that it once was. Um, so it's interesting to to think about that stuff. Yeah. But um, so head on over to that channel. I'll have a, I always have a link below to that stuff. So head on over, give him some support. And I think that rounds it out. Monty, do you have any more news? Mm, nope, nothing I can think of. But I did see that, that episode with you too, and it was another good one. I like I like his stuff. Twelve minutes in and out, short overview, quick hits. Um, yeah, yeah, really nice format. So he does a really good job of uh, tightly editing that stuff. So you know the ones that we did are going to be like twice as long as the normal ones. So but they're only like yeah, 12, 12 15 yeah. minutes at most. Yeah, yeah. That we had for that. So okay, cool. Let's pop on over to comments. I've got a few. Got it last up. time. Uh, good response as always, everyone. Thank mm -hmm. you for piping in, sharing your thoughts. We're going to pick three responses. And um, first one here will be Martin Teasdale. So he was the winner last time. So he picked up a, I think, an Arab heavy cavalry box or a light cavalry box because the other person, I think, Robin. Ended up getting the other one. So that's awesome. I mean, officially, Gripping Beast's offer was just a point of the metal figures. But for basically the last contest here, they've just been giving away uh, plastic boxes, which is awesome. Wow. You know? yeah. <laughs> Pretty much when you get, that's a whole war band. You yeah. Spring for the Viking or the Saxon one. Um, so he says... We were curious about how he did his picture. So he's 
Pictures were taken with a Pixel 4a and a cheap light box that I got on Amazon. And he just did a slight color correction with Photoshop to make the color pop up like they do on the miniatures as the contrast and colors were a bit flat on the original photo. The metal is not non-metallic metal, but the varnish he uses, Vallejo wow. Premium RC, is really flat. And he likes that effect for historicals. He would probably varnish the metal parts in satin if he's painting fantasy stuff. Have you heard of this, Vallejo Premium I RC? have not. I was going to write this down because I'm always curious to find new products that, especially dead flat. You mentioned something else that was dead flat, too. Yeah, the AK Interactive. Right. Very flat. Borderline too flat. Sounds like this <laughs> might be in the, the ballpark. Yeah, yeah. The RC, I think, is referencing like RC cars when right. I did a little Radio research. Control. So. Right. Alejo is in a, a bunch of different other hobbies yeah. as well as the minis. So that's awesome. Thanks for the tip. I know those pixels do have a good camera. I uh, recently upgraded to a Pixel 2A Monty. So oh. I'm about six or seven years behind <laughs> okay. uh, the, phone, Oopsie, I see. the phone curve. <laughs> I got to wait till they get under 100 before. Good for you. Seriously. Uh, splurge. <laughs> it's it's madness. Um so and that kind of plays on a different comment here, which is uh love the miniatures you painted, seen them on Twitter. Uh this is from Nano Dave nineteen eighty. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering have you done any painting tutorials on your channel? So way do you remember the the painting videos that I did way a long time ago, Mike. I do. I do. You're men of Wessex, right? Yeah. So when I first started, I did some some painting videos. And um, I don't know. Those those were okay. They, they weren't my thing. It was a lot of work to do those. And other people do them so much better. Um, so I haven't gone back to them. But with this Pixel 2A Monty... Uh, it's got 4K video, so I was messing around with some of the stuff that I have, and I actually do um, did a little bit of recording, so I think I can record some of my painting. The other reason I kind of stopped doing that was, you know, I just wanted to spend my time painting stuff, not working right. on videos and everything. <laughs> well, I'm doing so much right. painting now right. that I think I could yes. Yes. do a little video stuff on the side. You know, as long as my motivation holds. So, yeah. um, stay tuned. There might be something there with uh, oh, nice my new fancy refurbished old camera here. Uh, so, last one. I'm going to kick this one to you, Monty. Okay. This one is from Jake Rossler. My dumb question from Twitter. So, he okay. poked me there initially. The activation pool basic ability. Can you explain how and when you use it for a newbie? So sure. He's, he's not getting it. Sure. So, um, so I mean, I, I think I understand where this is coming from. So a huge part of Saga is your Saga dice. And uh, unless you're you know, early in the game, you pretty quickly find yourself with not enough Saga dice. So when you're lucky enough to roll that rare, um, right, that's what we're talking about. We put it up in the activation pool. Um, the rare becomes available once you put it up there, and then you have to find one other available unused Saga die, uh, one you haven't rolled up and placed, you know, set aside for your board. Put them together, and now you got two. Roll it onto your board, and that's your activation pool, right? Yes. So I think one of the confusing things is the... And I don't know this offhand, but there's um, active saga dice, inactive saga dice, and then there's like another definition. You know, right. it's dice that you've rolled right. and allocated, dice that you've rolled but haven't allocated, then there's dice that are sitting off to the side. So basically, this allows you, you spend one dice, one rare on that ability, and it takes... You know, you spend it, so that one dice goes over to your pile of unused dice. So that's another confusing thing, is you spend it right away. And then you can take two from that unused pile, roll them, and uh, continue on with your turn. 
And if you just keep rolling rares, you can you can keep doing that till you're out of right. your eight saga dice, with, which is what you have to play with. Right. So it just gives you more saga dice, and there's kind of like a risk or reward. You know, sometimes you might need a rare mm-hmm. for something good, but if you you really need a, another activation or you need to do this ability, and um, well, if you just Use the activation pool. If you roll the a uh, rare again, you can get the extra dice and you do what uh, what you really want to. Exactly. Um, now the danger there is always um, whenever you have. You know, this is pure superstition we're getting into here, Monty. <laughs> but if you have, if you rolled yes. uh, either all but. So you roll one rare, and then the rest are either uncommons or commons. You never spend the rare to try to get the other one that you're missing, because it, it never happens. <laughs> so if you have five commons and a rare, and you want to spend yes. the rare to get the uncommons, it's, right. it's not going to happen. You're going to roll two more, two exactly. more commons, right. or yes, the, the vice for it. You, know, you have five uncommons. I just need one. One regular rare or uh, run common to to do it. Um, you're just going to roll two more uncommons if if you spend the rare. So that's a pro tip. Sounds that like you've uh, experienced this phenomena yourself, Monty. Oh, oh yes, uh, without a doubt. Yeah, your saga dice can bite you so hard. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're just having a little fun there, not to confuse you, but uh, you use the activation pool to get more saga dice. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's very handy for the those late game turns when you just have three dice, four dice. Um, going from three to four dice is a really big jump. Yeah. Or four to five. Going from six to seven maybe is not such a big deal, especially depending on your abilities. So it's just a little risk reward mechanic built into the board. Hope that makes sense, Jake. If not, comment again. Uh, we'll sort you out. Yeah. Using the written word. So, all right. I think think that's it for comments. And let's get to the the hobby stuff here, Monty. You sent me some pics. And um, I'm looking at some Teutonic Knights here. And these, (laughs) we've been playing on the simulator. These are some scary looking dudes. Um, yeah, these are pretty gnarly fellas. I, I wasn't showing them the proper respect on the tabletop <laughs> simulator, but if you show up with these guys, right? I um, know. Yeah, so I should explain. Like these very figures you're looking at here, this is what pulled me in. I had no plan in December. I didn't walk around with a burning desire to paint up a Teutonic army. I didn't like what I had. And a buddy made a suggestion, and I looked. I'm like, oh, these guys are cool, and you can kind of mess around. The big push is, as, as you can do it in multiple ways, but the big push is if you can just add a little punch of color. So my cheat color is red, clearly here, right, with mm-hmm. a little bit of yellow. And um, these kind of cool just helmets and shields. And when you get it all together, yeah, they look they look pretty nice. So I, 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 um, I finished up my mounted, my uh, 12 mounted half guard. It's a lot of work, um, but it's good to have them. And uh, now, kind of like you can see just a couple in the background. A buddy of mine uh, was looking at my stuff, and he goes, "You really need some warriors." And you know, I mean, I kind of poo-pooed it, but the truth is, eh, why not? They're quick, and you know, the beauty mm-hmm. of plastics is I rooted around, and I had a bunch of fire forge. I'm like, okay, I bash yeah. them up, and so I've got two points, one point painted, and one more paint on the table to my right. And once I finish that point, I think. I'm going to pop over and work on my Carthaginians. I'll call these guys kind of done for the time being. I can always come back to them. But, yeah, that that was my hobby, a, a nice productive February with uh, pretty much wrapping up the Teutonic Knights. And uh, Carth- Carthage was sneaking in there, too, from time to time. I just <laughs> felt like painting something different. So I pulled up some ancients and worked on those. So a nice month, February. Yeah, very good. These guys are awesome. The, the leaf Thanks, litter, the nice little pot, those red leaves, tying it all together. Yeah, um, very that cool. really helped. The that really helped. The is, is awesome on these guys. Just the different styles. 
Yeah. Uh, they're they're good. nice. Right. Gripping Beast did a really nice job on these. Very, uh, very happy. You get a mix. Um, and I also kind of like when you see the picture, there's a guy who with no helmet on. He's supposed to be your warlord. But I saw the guy with the uh, bishop, you know, the pope hat. And I'm like, that's got to be my warlord. <laughs> he's going to be a holy. He's going to he's going to say, don't make me come off this horse and convert you. And, and he just looks kind of like a badass. So mm -hmm. warlord he is. Yeah, there's with his color scheme and the helmets, you know, I think historically, you know, they were trying to be imposing and uh, yes. it, they look at, they look imposing compared to my little, my little <laughs> Vikers running around here. Yeah. Your guys aren't too afraid of them so far. I must say. <laughs> oh, well, we'll get into that. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, thanks for sharing. Glad to yeah. hear that February went well for you. Uh, definitely a short month. Not a lot of time here. This episode snuck up on us for sure. Oh, yeah. yes, it did. Okay, so last time I talked about uh, I was doing some oil painting. Not uh, on the canvas, but on the models here. So I've got two commissions that I finished recently. So the first one, let's look at the big demon guy. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Dang. Those bandits. Dude. Um, so, yeah, these are primarily um, oil oil paints. The colors are are basically primarily oil. So we start with an acrylic base coat, okay. do the shading with the oils, and then the you know, if I need to, I can go back with acrylic and kind of just... Do some little pin highlights or something like that. I don't know. Do you have any? I've got some thoughts to say, but I don't know, just looking at them, do you have any questions yeah, yeah. about what I, you're seeing I, before you based off? Well, of I do. Thing? So first of all, like the you know the, the great thing about our hobby is a buddy of mine says life is too short to paint you know bad miniatures. These are fantastic. I mean, they are so colorful, so unusual. Number one. So number two, the acrylic. So like when I'm looking at the big boss, is the acrylic the purple or is the purple scratch mixed in oil? I, I, I'm not sure. Yeah, so on the big guy, the armbands, Yep. Um, those start out as purple. Oh, wow. And his skin, which if you look in the cracks of his like belly and stuff, yeah. Yep. Um, was like a kind of a brown. Okay. And then you can kind of see it was maybe like a lighter brown on yeah, the, the yeah. horns as, as the okay. starting. So on some of them, like the you completely cover with the oil, and then some of them you like leave, you know, the some of the acrylic uncovered. So one thing I'm still like working through this. There's so many different techniques I think you could use. With the oils, I mean, because you can do the washes, and you can you get at your Q-tip and you know scrape, you know, s scrape it off, slough it off. Um, you can kind of blend on the model. One thing is you can you can even just if you're getting started, I mean, you can just paint the same way that you paint with acrylics. You can paint the same way to start with. You're probably like not leaning into the strengths of the oils. But um, so every once in a while when I was working on these guys. And so what, what I mean by that is like you're mixing colors like on your wet yeah. palette or something like you don't yeah. you don't have to do that. You shouldn't do that. Like okay. if you want. You say on these, you know, if we're looking at the gray or something, uh, there's like a darker kind of gray. Yeah, this, he zoomed in. So if you want to go right. to my Twitter or Instagram, you can kind of see these guys closer up. Um. You know, so the gray just kind of look, if we're talking simplistically here. We have like a dark gray and then a light gray. Right. So like with acrylics, you might, you know, there's a couple of different ways you could accomplish that. Um, but you might paint it dark and then you mix the dark gray and the light gray together and then, you know, do a little bit more and then mix the paint some more and work your way up to a highlight. Well, you could do that with oils. You can also put the, you know, cover about half of it with the 
the light gray, about half of it with the dark gray, and then use your brush to smudge in between, and you do the the the, the mixing like right on the model. Oh wow! Okay. So like okay. you, yeah. You know, so that's you know, if you you mess it up, you can use some spirits and kind of dissolve what you did, wipe okay. it off, and you can start over again and do it again. Okay. So like. You know, we're talking. That sounds pretty. Sounds like a super ability. You know, it's something you'd like to be able to do. <laughs> All right. Um, so, yeah, that's that's one thing you could do. I know. Um, kind of doing highlights and uh, like micro textures with the oils works really well because you're like the paint doesn't dry. So, like if I was, um. I don't know if we want to jump to black jaw here, the orc. Okay, can do. Um, yep, got him. So the big guy in the middle, he kind of has like that gray part there. Again, I can't. Yep. This is a group shot, but if you zoom in, there's kind of like little texture, little mm -hmm. dots and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So if you're doing that with like acrylic, I use like a little tiny brush typically and, you know, the the paint dries out pretty pretty quickly, so you're going back and forth right. to water, right. right? When you have such a little tiny brush head, well, with the oils, like it doesn't doesn't dry out. <laughs> like okay. you can you can just just keep going, like and do you know maybe probably like five to ten times as much coverage as you could with acrylic, you know, in a comparable, you know, just doing little tiny dots. Or highlights, like if that's your thing. Um, so it's just it's just sort of interesting to play with. Now, you definitely need to start with an acrylic base coat, and um, the oils are kind of translucent depending on which ones you're using. So this is like with any kind of paint, you know, you're gonna have ones that you like or dislike. So actually, on the orcs here, the skin I started with oils. And like it wasn't really working. Now the quality of these models, I mean, I did a good job on them, but it's kind of suspect. Huh. Um, I give it just with like mode lines and okay. some okay. malformed things. And like if I were painting these for myself, like I probably would have stopped painting them. Actually, wow, um, they just had some I they just had some issues. But, right, uh, right. I I can't see it at all. I mean, that's a credit <laughs> to you and your painting. I mean, yeah. these are wonderful. So the the skin started purple. Now I went with the green over it, and like the green yep. was like too translucent. Like it wasn't like it wasn't really working. And one thing with the acrylics, you could kind of paint, let it dry. You know, within like five or ten minutes or whatever. And then build up your layers. So with the the green here is so translucent, like I, in like it doesn't dry for a long time. So like it, I just couldn't build up the green enough to cover. Got so it. I actually kind of did like a half ass oil attempt, and then I let it dry. And then the next day I went back over with the acrylics. So oh. like some of these are like, you know. So I would say that skin probably has like. A purple acrylic base, like a green oil, <laughs> like darker tone, and then like an acrylic for the highlights on top of okay. it, kind of okay. filling in the color. So, you, that's the other thing too. Like I don't know a lot, but you can you can easily jump back and forth. I mean, you would let the oil just sit a day before you jump it. So you know, okay. I'm not painting that much that it's. I'm hitting it multiple times in a day, so um, you know the skin wasn't working. I stopped. I came back the next morning, and you know, I just did it in acrylics and kind of went back to what was comfortable. So, nice. Um, I would I would recommend checking them out. Um, so I just have like a Windsor Newton introductory oil set down yeah. at uh, Michael's Hobby Lobby, what have you. You need some spirits. And um, I got some janky nylon brushes that I've been using. 
But you use the spirits to clean out the oil. And um, it's weird. Like, I'm taking really good care of these crappy brushes. And, like, they're working really good for me. <laughs> wow. Um, so, yeah, those are just some random musings here. Um, and actually, on some of the um, the heathens that I've already done, you know, I did a, them originally with airbrush and acrylic. And when I was doing the last, you know, I've been talking about the last 10% on them. Some, some of it has been done with oils. So I okay. don't know if I talk about like the final highlight on like a blue or yeah. white or green. Um, on some of them I did with oils. So um, you can mix and match. If it's not working for you, move on. But um yeah, for what you're doing, Monty, I, I think you you might find it useful. I don't know hmm. how adventurous you're feeling. Yeah, but, I mean I'll you have got. To get... I mean you're banging I these gotta... out. What you're doing works for you. Right, right. Um, but I actually bought some oils, Winsor Newton tubes, and I have some. Uh, oh yeah, that's exactly I, I, what I got. Most yeah, I've likely. Got the, exactly, but I just. I think I got it, and then I like forgot what I got it for or what I was going to do, and it just kind of sat there. So I, I haven't – I mean, I, I at least should take a crack at like maybe put a toe in, like maybe a dark umber wash, you know, oil wash or something. Just see how it compares to some of the other stuff I do. I don't know. I need to – I need to change it up, but I do fall into the rut that I get up here and I have a system and it's a little factory like, mm -hmm. and I just like, just keep repeating that. But Hey, how about, how about trying something different? Yeah. I mean, give it a shot. Yeah. If, if you're happy with your factory system, <laughs> uh, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say change it, but if you know, you're banging stuff out and you're getting kind of bored of this or why you want to try something yeah. a little different, um, I would definitely, definitely mess around with them. I, I think yeah. it's it's well worth an investigation, and you can get some good results. Um, the the downsides, I don't think there's there really isn't a downside <laughs> to, to to messing around. Um, right. and like the drying stuff. Now I thin them way down with the spirits, so I mean. They're pretty much dry within, you know, like a half hour or an hour. You can work with them. Maybe they're okay. not like officially fully cured, but like, right. um, you know, immediately you you want to want to work adjacent to them. You know, if you're doing other oil paints, I know it's kind of interesting because if you got your, you know, your skin or whatever, um. You're gonna paint the rags or something on these guys. Well, your your paint has some of that spirit in it, so you could actually wipe off some of the skin that you already did. Like if you were to contact, uh, so there could be right, some right. issues. So, yeah, um, adapt. Yeah, you gotta. It's worth messing around with. So, yeah. uh, hopefully, that was an interesting uh, discussion on these guys. So I've already nice. jumped back to the heathens here <laughs> and I kind of have a plan so I've got the about 16 completely finished I quick I've got like another seven that are completely finished now I haven't taken photos of them so I got about uh, I think nine more it takes it up to 32 so within wow. the next two weeks I'll have 32 that are completely finished now 12 of those were like levy with javelins, but I mixed in some shields and hand weapons. And then I have eight gripping beast warriors. Um, actually a couple of those are the brother Vinny's females. And so they, you know, they're the same colors, you know, some of them have spears, some have javelins, axes and stuff. So I can easily mix and match them. Right. Like if I wanted to do three units of levy for pagan peoples. Yep. So I'm at 32. So I've got another 16, like, already based and, like, Zenith all highlighted. But and that's, like, the Viking build. You know, so, you know, we're switching to the Pagan People's build, Monty. You know, so. Right. <laughs> um, I just need to do four. So, four is a lot more motivating than 16. Right. But once I do the four, you know, that only leaves 12. So, in the future, I'll be good. So, I'll be able to, I'll have 36 kind of infantry 
kind of levyish javelin heavy folks, but you can run them for whatever. And then I'll have, I already have them, the Varangian guard, um, with heavy weapons, the gripping beast guys. And mm -hmm. I think I, I think I have a little bit of both. I can't remember exactly, but I've got the Yams Vikings. Or not the Yams Vikings. I do have Yams Vikings. I got them all, Monty. All the cool looking Vikings. <laughs> um, the Pagan Roos, the me the metal, the Hearthguard Pagan Roos guys, which are awesome. They're so awesome. A couple of those have, I gave them some Dane axes. So between the Varangians and those Pagan Roos uh, heavily armored guys, I can do six Hearthguard with Dane axes. Nice. And then the tricky part will be the um, the mounted guys. So I've actually got an order of V and V miniatures cataphracts. So the riders are like perfect. The horses, I mean, they're cool horses. I mean, I can make cataphracts out of those, but I'll just use like regular steeds. Right. So you have some heavily armored. They're kind of eastern looking riders just on regular horses is the plan. But the problem is those guys have been on like orders since November. And I don't know. I went, I went through a Michigan toy soldier. So it just, they've been on like back order. So I don't okay. I don't know where they're at in the process. And, yeah. Uh, um, so it could do that. Or I do have the Arab, the, uh, Heavy cav, light cav. I've got different plastic bits, so I could assemble some out of those guys. Right. Now, do you remember coyotes? I do. I do. Uh, guys, and, so these are all kit bashed. Yep, so he, exactly. He shows the way if I want to go that route. Yeah. Um. So I'll, I'll probably try to find a link to that below. It's just a forum thread with his Eastern. Prince Riders, and he does a really good job kit bashing those. And those are primarily the Arab heavy and light cavalry. I think he does for those. Right. So I'm just going to concentrate on the infantry for now. And then mm -hmm. uh, in a month, I will think about what I'm going to do for the riders. So that's yeah. the plan currently. Maybe by then the uh, shipment will show up. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, they're really cool, cool models. And then. Got the cataphract horses. I've got some Byzantines, and uh, mm -hmm. I just mush them together. You know, <laughs> right? Might not be able to resist. I I like that unit, that le that legendary unit. Um, in both, I think it's in Crusades, and I think it's in the the Viking book. There's a version yeah. of it, one in each. I think um, it is. Basically, when they charge, Beautiful. they give the enemy a fatigue. So yeah, that's uh, a great start. <laughs> That's a good ability. Um, that's that's a good good star, like you say. Yes, yeah. It is. Uh, so I w I wouldn't mind running those guys, for sure. Okay. Well, that's it for the paint chat. I think, Monty, um, we got some games in. We did I'm talk about. We could touch on our game a little bit, uh, but I'm gonna let you. I think you got some other games in. Judging by I, this image you've provided. Right, right. So, um, yeah. I mean, it, February was also a good month for, for Saga. I got a couple, three games on Tabletop Simulator. And um, here in Minnesota, the club is pretty empty. It's a big space. And a few yeah. buddies of mine are, you know, we meet meet up, masked up. We're like one of, you know, three tables in the whole place. And we roll a little bit of Saga. So my game um, was kind of fun. Um, a buddy of mine has been running through a Levant Crusader for years, and he watched our game, and uh, so he said, hey, how about I run the uh, Baltic Crusaders and, you know, maybe give you a few pointers, kind of help you let tune me, up. Uh, let me show you how it's done. Uh, right. exactly. Was he rolling up his sleeves? Well, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and, you know, it's funny. I mean, Raj, I've had Book of Battles forever, but one of the scenarios that somehow whenever we land on, you start reading, and then it refers to different parts. You're like, yeah, let's let's find an easier one, right? Yeah, I, I hear you. Which, which one are you, are you talking so, about now? So it, we played Ambush for the first time. I don't know why we let it go this long, because it turns out to be, I, I thought it was a blast. 
Um, ambush is the one where you have three baggage trains, um, and each warband has to come onto the table. The baggage train is going from short side to the other short side. Baggage train activates. Okay, yep. Right? There's a random roll to activate each of the three wagons um, in each person's activation phase. Yes. So, so that's very, the misleading right. part because they, they go on each person's turn. So if you get right. the right rolls, those guys are can be cooking. You know, right. Before right. you know it, they're halfway across the table, and it's just Which turn is, two. Exactly, which is part of the strategy is trying to figure out where you're going to intercept them and where they'll stop. And then one other wrinkle, these baggage trains are hard to take down. They're armor 5-6, resilience 1. So you basically have to push through four unblocked hits to take them down. And when you do, they become an objective. And that, by the way, after you get that objective, you're now sitting there with their fatigue. And your buddy might say, oh, don't mind if I do, punch you and take the objective, right? So there's, it's it's just... It's a kind of uh, controlled chaos with like three things going on. You don't have quite enough saga dice to do everything. So real quick, we set it up, we read it, we think it through. We're like, oh, this is going to be fun. Um, so I go, um, my buddy comes on the table and I go second. I have a full board. He's fronting his whole war band with turkopoles. And I know what a pain in the butt turkopoles mm -hmm. are. Those free activations, the shooting, the saga dice. So I'm like, I am the Matatawea player. I'm going to throw a four-pack of Hearthguard with a full board, and I'm going to just blast these guys off the table, take away a Saga die at least. If I get lucky, maybe I pop them, and then fatigue goes everywhere. Well, I run across the table. I pop them. I make my plays. We dice when we're all done. He saves every hit except one. I save all mine so I don't lose anyone, but then I'm sitting in front of his crossbow, and he just he just shoots him down to the man. So I'm like, well, that's this is a great opening, you know. Here we go again, right? <laughs> so um, so it starts getting warm. I do grab one of the baggages, but it takes like two waves of shooting. And after I grab it, I realize the unit that now has the baggage, it's an objective. So they're kind of you want them to hustle to your side of the table. So you've kind of put one of your own units out of play because you that that objective is worth like mm -hmm. six points six points it's a right good chunk of change yeah, yeah big time so i'm hustling off the board and it's starting to kind of like uh, it's getting hot the uh, my guys are, my mutts are getting shot up by his baltic crusaders and the crossbow don't really have an answer for it and then there was like kind of that that turning point that opens the door back up for me he sends a pack of mounted knights to hit a wagon hits the wagon, takes it down in one combat, right? Four hits go through, takes it, but get this, the wagon has three dice, pushes three hits through, and he saves none of them. So he has Ooh. one one night with the objective. So the mutts are like, let me help you yes. with that, right? And so I, my turn, I rushed, I popped it, fatigue everywhere, took it back, and then I, I had a very full board, so I kind of like, you know, you know kind of like left it at that. And the, the key is I put a promise of paradise, which a promise of paradise is if my unit dies, all of them die. And with a rare, um, when I take that last figure, you measure a foot out and every one of his units within a foot will take fatigue. I, I ran my armor down. I added plus to both our combat dice and played promise with a rare. He took my unit and I immediately, like with all the battle going on in the middle, two of his units exhausted out. Um, his warlord was one of the units that exhausted out, and he's right in front of my camel riding warlord. And that that was kind of game. A camel against a, a mounted warlord that's that's you know exhausted. Don't even have to do anything. He can't hit me, and he's <laughs> and I'm putting auto hits on him. Right? It's just mean. But. You, just, you just walk it. Yeah, you can't. Right. You can't hit. Sorry. Right. Right, I know. So, so I mean, you know, so here's the good news, bad news, Raj. The good news was up until that moment where the wagon beat up his hearth guard and opened up the door, he was running them tight. They looked good. He had the crossbow in a very good position where they were just, I couldn't really deal with them. The turkopoles were running around and shooting me too. He, mm -hmm. was, he was like, it was a very good demo of like how to run them tight and well. But boy, those mutts are fun. And the board is so, the board is so, janky in a way that like you know i could see my buddy's looking at my dice he's thinking i'm looking at my dice i'm thinking and he doesn't have any idea and neither do i like <laughs> i mean i know i have these abilities but till you punch me then i'm gonna like look and think and go what about and just start grabbing things just like that promise of paradise i mean that was 
that was a nightmare play just just you know exhaust out his key units like it did and and i think it was six six fatigues dropped on his warband in one turn you can't Ooh, come back from maybe. that maybe yeah yeah anyways it was fun it was that's that's what saga is all about we laughed and mm -hmm. and we we put it aside and it was it was fun that's awesome sounds like a blast and he was using in your models? For, yeah, he was using this? my models. So that was kind of fun, right? Yeah. I just finished painting them, and my Matata Wea, the latest version, had never seen the tabletop. So in one fell swoop, right. I yeah. got both sides. It's good inspiration for painting. I mean, that's what I need. Mm-hmm. Sounds like it. That's awesome. Um, yeah, did you uh, kind of glean any secret tips? I mean, was he doing anything dramatically different? Like that, uh, that you wouldn't have thought of. I mean, I can't you really know, picture right. necessarily I mean, anything. Maybe, maybe not big picture, but I mean, you know, one one problem, which is just so strange. This is really on me, like as the person mm -hmm. running the war band. A couple times, um, like in a couple of my games, my crossbow, I managed to just not get them in the right spot. I did. I made a mistake that I play on my opponents all the time. I, I was so worried about them being run down that I put them in, in in rocky ground, and then they were kind of out of the way. And then it took two activations to get them out of the rocky ground and kind of towards the middle. Then the game was over. So like, I mean, it kind of drove home the importance that that crossbow unit's got to be front and center it's got to be popping off shots and driving up the pressure and then the the duality of both the turka poles are driving me mad and the crossbow are driving me mad which one do i want to charge and then as you saw i rushed across the table i hit the turka poles and then as sometimes happens in sog it all goes sideways you know <laughs> i i kill one turka pole for for my harp guard oh. unit not a good trade uh -huh. what well, I mean, he had him in the middle, right? So he probably got a ton of defense dice, though. He or, did. Or and no, that, is it? That was his key. Although, kinda... although uh, this is my bad, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, I've run Turkable, and you, you know, you're kind of new. So we were addition defense dice, and then like the fine print, um, I realized like a little later is that your Turkables give you two defensive dice to mounted units that are within short. Uh, so I don't, okay. yeah, right. And that's my bad. I, mm -hmm. I was somehow thinking it was everyone, but I'm yeah, like, that's 90, what I was thinking too. Yeah. 99% yeah. sure it's uh it's mounted only. So yeah. Good. Next time. Know. Okay. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear you've been getting the games in. <laughs> yeah. Having some fun. Um, my game was, was our game. So, <laughs> this has been uh I don't know. If you've been following everything we've been doing, this might be the third third time we're going over it. I mean, we streamed it on the Discord and then I put up the video uh just the full video. So, that actually turned out really well, I think. It did, dude. So, it did. Um, you know, there are people putting out like full Saga like battle report videos, but or just just battle reports in general that are just dumps of the entire thing. Yeah, you know, I'm personally not a fan of those. You know, there's a lot of dead time and right, right. You know, people moving stuff around, but with the simulator, you know, we're just kind of talking the whole time. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was interesting, and you know, so my first idea was to you know make a the, the greatest hits. And just kind of summarize it, but it's still, you know, can't help digging into to everything. So it's still, it's going to be like 40 minutes and I was just yep. 40 minutes of me and you might as well just add 40 minutes of Monty and, you know, we got the whole thing, you know, the excitement. Um, so yeah, the audio was a little jank, but worked out in the end. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, do you have any thoughts after going through, I I do have one kind of backtrack or uh, thought after our game. I, yeah. I, I've got a couple of different ideas, actually, but okay. kind of one main takeaway. Yeah, I'm curious. Did you have any? Right. Thing? I'm curious. I'm curious to hear yours, but um, I had a couple of thoughts. Like, I, and I... I think this was okay. We knew we were doing a, like, you know, public uh, streaming. And so... Um, you know, like a, a well, let's just say 
a pretty serious player, a tournament player, a poker face player is going to be, you know, kind of quiet. You're not going to talk out all your <laughs> thoughts you know, as you have them, which is exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if that was distracting or helping to show just what a butterfly lives in my mind. No, as I I'm... think I, I, I think it's I think it's good. It was fun okay. to listen to, and you okay. know, I try to do some of the same thing. I mean, yeah, I play Saga. My those first couple activations and laying the dice down is is pretty. It's pretty tough for me. You know, it's going to take a good mm -hmm. five minutes of, mm -hmm. of thinking, and um, you did good filling filling the dead air at least while while I was thinking, Monty. <laughs> so um, it was good. I think. Um, one mistake that I made, which you kindly made a mistake, but I didn't even think about it until later, was um, I was the one who put down the woods that your crosswoman eventually went into. Right. So there was a mistake to put down the small woods. I should have put down the large woods because oh. then it would have been... Yeah. Almost impossible for you to block out, Spread the, out the teleporting. So but you made a mistake by not, you know, just putting a guy back to block mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You know, but in the first place I should have put down the large woods, which would have stopped it. You know, you wouldn't have had that chance unless you had pulled everybody back, you know, specifically deployed your unit to to do that. Mm -hmm. Um and I don't know if you consider warriors or splitting up your levy specifically to do that. You know, it might be worth thinking about. Um, I'm just, I'm yeah. just thinking of that right here, right here, right now. Yep. I wasn't thinking yep. about that in advance, but. Um, and then the other thing that kind of got me was that last combat, where my Dane axes went in to your hearth guard. Okay. And you actually killed three of them. And, you know, I killed four, but. You know, it kind of shows how um, vulnerable those yeah. hearth guard are, and yeah. how lucky I got. You know, right. obviously we saw how lucky I got, but um, I think the Turkable combat was extremely lucky Oof, because yeah. I really, like, I really need you to have fatigue so I can take my armor up, and I think you did a good job of keeping the pressure on in that game to make me have to go in without that bonus and you know I had the numbers and could kind of dictate it a little bit but you know those are kind of straight up combats between the Turkopoles and that Hearthguard unit and then I think even the, the follow up fight with the mounted guys their third combat um because the Turkopoles they were just I was going in I was armor four and you had mm -hmm. eight attack dice. And, right. You know, so it should have been depleted down to half strength for exactly. doing that. <laughs> um so at the end of the game, you know, I was thrilled with how the Hearthguard did, but yeah, now I'm yeah. like really thinking, I'm like, mm, like I really I mean it was obviously I got lucky, but like I really got by the skin of the teeth with the Hearthguard there. Like I really need to make sure the levy go in first, or otherwise it's just gonna get really dicey like that, you know, where like I, I needed the luck to be on my side. Um, because I was I was getting really dicey with it, you know, putting mm -hmm. myself out there. You know, so the dice came through, but um, it could have easily gotten like very ugly the opposite way, just with that Turkopole combat. But I just felt I had to go in against them. But yeah, um, should have yeah, been no. way closer, uh, it, obviously. Exactly. <laughs> but they they would have now that I think of it, right? Like now going back. I think that there were two reasons, and you had a very good observation. I should have at least had one unit on foot, but what I was doing with the mounted was kind of two things. Number one, I was trying to maximize the Turkopole benefit, and then number two, um, I wanted every one of them to be kind of like a bolt, like a 12-inch bolt that could mm -hmm. shoot. And and I was kind of hoping with my Warlord in the middle to pull pull you into the middle into a kill zone unfortunately that kill zone mostly was me 
dying. But, you know, we were fighting in the open. That's what I wanted. We were not, you. other than my warlord, you didn't shoot me to death. You, we, you know, I died in melee. Mm -hmm. We fought in the open. We didn't fight in woods. We didn't fight in terrain. And your one Hearthguard unit killed at least three points of my army, which is very, very efficient. Very efficient. Yeah. Yeah, that hurt. Not yeah. going to lie. That was uh, some gnarly work. They yeah. wanted to yeah. get used again. They're, they want to be converted up. You know, exactly. They be <laughs> imported from Eastern Europe <laughs> to Wisconsin, <laughs> USA. They had to do what it takes. Exactly. So, well, yeah. Um, yeah. That was fun. It was definitely a fun game. A uh, very fun scenario. Um, Could have went I very different. I do love that one. Yeah. Very cool. It's fun just having a little bit of impassable terrain, too, just to mess with you. Because mm -hmm. in a normal historical game of Saga, you don't have that. Um, yeah. Well, for the campaign, the back of the book mm -hmm. campaign, uh, the Pagan Peoples are ahead, two, two wins. <laughs> no losses and a draw. Yeah. And, uh, the Crusaders on the flip side. Not doing so hot. Yeah, uh, Raj, it, the, uh, the Crusaders are sliding into Minnesota Timberwolves. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't want to inherit that level of utility. Oh, so yeah. I, I do have some thoughts. I have a plan. It has to work, but I have a plan in my pocket for our next our next showdown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So per the campaign, you get to decide the next scenario. Mm -hmm. You're going to decide who goes first or second, mm -hmm. you know, even if it's supposed to be random. And then I threw this out there, you know, just to make it even more even, you know, uh, you could dictate um, some of my army composition. So very, I don't know how soon after our game, but I received a message <laughs> on my phone <laughs> saying minute. I could not take any levy in our next game. <laughs> so... That is correct. That that's going to be fun. I think we're going to have a very, yeah. just based off that, a very different game. I think now so. I would be pretty alarmed at this, but I know that Herkus just he doesn't run him with Levy to begin with, and uses Hearthguard and Warriors, and um, his build is very different. So he can, it can be done, mm -hmm. and I'm um, ready to meet the challenge. Yes. head on. Um, I'm probably going to need to. So I'm thinking probably three points of hearth guard, three points of warriors. Wow. And then the warriors, I can go bows or just just the fighty guys. Yeah. And then the unit sizes between four and six. And then it'll just depend on kind of the, the scenario. You know, whether whether they go with bows or not. So I haven't I haven't decided. One way or the other, but uh, interesting. So you've already you got it. You got to figure it out, huh? I have. I, I'm well. I mean, I'm pretty locked in on this. I like it enough that I'm locked in. I am going to switch to the Ordenstad board. Okay. And uh, cool. I'm going to try something that I've I have not seen done before. That does not mean it's a good idea, but it's an idea. So we'll see. Okay, I'm looking. We'll see. I'm looking forward to this. Yeah, yeah, Pretty cool. To to go back to the the Ordenstadt board. I mean, we yeah. did it in that first game, mm -hmm. and then it, I had played the Crusaders a couple times previously. So I'm feeling I'm getting a pretty good feel for the Crusaders. <laughs> All right, but too good of a feel. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, looking forward to that. Uh, we can try to set that up. Do a Discord again. I think that's pretty fun. Yep. So uh, get on the Discord if you don't want to miss out. All right. Let's jump to the mercenaries again mm -hmm. for Crusades. Yep. So there's not too much to discuss here. Yeah, yeah. Um, we got a couple dogs. We're going to feed them a couple, a couple treats, a couple biscuits here. <laughs> yep. Bring them back to the master's fire, and then we'll touch on the uh, ones we didn't hit last time. So, um, why don't we? I don't know. Why don't we talk about 
the uh, ones from last time that we weren't so hot on. So okay, um, we kind of split this up. I'm just going purely off memory here, so hopefully mm-hmm. <laughs> this works out. Um, I was going to talk about the tribal hunters and the priests yep. because we weren't so hot on those. Um, but you were going to do the Western Knights and the Troubadour, is that right? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Why don't you Why don't you start with the Western Knights? Sure. Flip flop. Sure. So the Western Knights are uh, eight warriors on foot or mounted. Um, they used to be a fan favorite, but they got FAQ'd, I think, in the last round, where they are limited to exactly one activation per turn. And especially for the uh, Western Knights on foot, that means they're moving around at a, at a rate of uh, yeah, you know four one, inches, right? One yeah. short. Yeah, so that's tough. But um, still, I'm thinking this through. Like To me, the purpose of a Merc is to kind of find a void or shortcoming in your build and kind of paper over with with this Merc. And so um, with your charge, you said look around and see who can field the Western Knights and then find the one that you think might use them the best or could use them the best. So um, I went through the book. I looked at the different factions that can field them. And I think the Spanish match up well with the mounted Western Knights. I picked mounted because they're still um, super tough. Uh, they're mm-hmm. five fours, so they're like uh, they're an eight pack of mounted warriors who actually look like they're an eight pack of half guard, and they mm-hmm. actually throw x four extra dice in combat. And the nice thing, the reason why I like them just to touch better than the foot is that for the Spanish, the Spanish are fast. They've got Hinates, they've got Iberia. They're, they're trying to strike and pull back. So the Western Knights would give you eight mounted warriors with 5-4 armor. Um, they um, move M, and they do charge L, so they should be able to keep up and not hold back your mounted Spanish warband too much. They should give you a nice screen. The only real drawback for them is the fact that they do activate one time a turn. But, but to me, that was that was their best. Um, that was their best match. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, they're definitely a fearsome unit on the charge. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, I guess it, the only thing that I can think of in looking at them is. You can only activate them once. Yep. So once they get kind of, you know, you get that first fatigue then, like, what do you, you can't rest and then charge again. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's true. Is there any, you know, I I think what you said is good. I get, I'm kind of spitballing right here. If there is a a war band that could get rid of fatigue off units through orders or orders of reaction, I know. One more right. band, you can kind of juggle the fatigues around. Yep, that's um, the Spanish. Oh, that is the Spanish? Right, okay. it is. Chaos. So, it's yeah, expensive. That... It's a rare, but you could... Sometimes you use it to mess with your opponent, but you can also use it to clean up your own. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's perfect. Yeah, that really uh, um, goes to the strengths of the board then, too, like in that respect as well. So, yeah, I think you could really... Make some people cry. Here, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's right. good. Yeah, um, that's awesome. Yeah, I think that works out really well. Um, so yeah, way to go. I think you met <laughs> the met challenge. your charge, sir. Uh, so I did the tribal hunters, and I went through these guys, and um, so I looked at different boards. My idea was if you can. If you can get crossbow levy or bow levy, you you probably wouldn't take these guys. So that leaves the pagan peoples, the Militus Christi, and the actually the Mutatawea. Okay. And um, I think either I think any one of those three war bands could do a little something. Now I don't. I think the Mutata Wea has a little bit of synergy with um, if you want to take the big bow unit and then re-roll all defense dice. If you're going right. all in on right. that strategy, having yeah. a unit of tribal hunters in addition uh, could 
could just maximize that if you were shooting at a unit amount of hearth guard, pop their fatigue, hit them on threes, and they're re-rolling defense dice like that. That is a can be a slaughter <laughs> yes, slaughterhouse. So I think from synergy that might be a good choice. The pagan peoples. Um, you know, just having one unit that's larger, I think, can be good. So I might experiment with that in our game as well. Um, for some of the rerolls and stuff like that. So just having a unit, like if you're going to have one unit that's bigger, because um, depending on the way your points break out between warriors, levies, like you might have to take a unit that's bigger uh, for some reason. So I think they could be, they give you a little something extra. The pagan peoples can put a ton of fatigue on the enemy just through uh, annoying activation. So um, right. they should be able to use the, the coup de gras shooting ability frequently. Um, so they could be there. But the militus, the militus get foot crossbowmen. Um, it's kind of tough whether you want to take these guys. Uh, they do have a basic, I think it's the Orison ability, where they can just uh, discount hits against them. So you mm -hmm. could use that on the, the tribal hunters here because it's a basic ability. Um, right. Yeah. So you could put these guys out there and you know, they could they could be more durable. Um, and that I was thinking about, you know, it might be more dependent on the types of war bands you're playing against. So if I'm playing Monty and he's got four units that mounted hearth guard. <laughs> Um, or a different war band that's mostly mounted hearth guard. Mm -hmm. So their traps ability. I mean, you, you think of the tribal hunters. You would think you know you want to be in the woods, but with that ability, you can just put them in the open and say, uh, "Come on!" So it's a if you charge them, they get a free shooting attack. They get a bonus die for every two models in the unit coming at them. So a four pack of hearth guard will be six shots coming at you. And you can't trigger any Saga abilities, so you can't do any defensive abilities. Now, the Crusaders wow. have that, that Orders overarching ability that would kind of yeah. get around this, but like, I don't know, like the Ordenstadt have a couple specific, you know, uh, shooting defense abilities to keep their guys alive. So you, you know, I could put my, <laughs> you put yourself out there where I'm shooting at you in the open, and if you want to take them out, you know, you have to take six shots, you know, just straight up. Wow. And yeah. um, I don't know, you got the cojones for it? I don't know. Yeah. And are you going to spend like your it. dice coming at me and taking the six <laughs> shots? And you could even kind of corral, corral them in, if, you know, depending how uh, afraid you are of, of the dice. So mm -hmm. you want to send your mana heart card against these guys? I don't know. No. I don't know that you want to do that. <laughs> and I then uh, they're still warriors, so when you come in, you're going to take eight eight attacks. So, um, you know, there's several scenarios. You know, where you declare a charge with four hearth guard. You have no hearth guard at the end of your melee, and, you know, I still have five. You know, I'm still generating a saga dice. You know, what are the chances? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good, Raj. <laughs> so I, I thought that was interesting. Just in yeah, general, yeah. taking the second look at them based off that, based off the kind of the whatever the meta of the Crusades, pushing towards mounted hearth guard in many factions. So about half of them, maybe, maybe it won't, and probably you know it won't come into play. But if, if you got a certain opponent, you could be quite vexing to them. Perhaps. So, all right. Um, any yeah, other good thoughts? Pick. Good based, find. Based wow, that? I like that. Mm -hmm. And the other ability is they have additional armor just in the open, too. So, um, yeah, get them in the open. You'd think they're skulkers, but they're <laughs> they're open, they're open field hunters. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did you want to talk about the troubadour? Yeah. Now, is there yeah, so, uh, some kind of crazy warlord only ability out there in ex the Crusades? Exactly. exactly. So, so um, on this one, 
Um, Troubadour is the Crusaders version of um, oh, the bard, basically. And in the Age of Viking, there's no one who can use the bard better than the Anglo-Danes mm. with their, um, oh my gosh, uh, the far right-hand corner. It's the one where your warlord yeah. dumps all fatigue, goes armor six. Yeah. And, you know, I think he, yeah, he has a resilience too while he has the Troubadour in there too. So he's just a beast. <laughs> so okay. what I was looking for was like some version of the Anglo-Dane mm -hmm. board play, fatigue sweeping, good armor. And I searched high and low. And there's really only one that this lands on. And surprise, surprise, um, it is the Baltic Crusaders. Um, okay. They can, right, right. They can use Peasant's Crusade to sweep two fatigue off the Warlord per turn. And if you mix in the Valiant, where you have to win a melee, and if your Warlord doesn't die, he should, unless he's fighting another Warlord and you tie out, he should be winning your melee. So winning a melee means he can sweep a third fatigue off. Um, and that's really the issue is that when you use your warlord with a troubadour or bard is that you have a rule where um, unless you're exhausted, you cannot rest. You need to just keep charging, charging, charging. Mm -hmm. And so you need this ability to sweep your fatigue so that your warlord doesn't get swept after he does his big battles. You don't want him yeah. all like sitting out there exhausted. So Baltic Crusaders have the ability to do that. Um, they can get you from exhausted to fresh for a common and two uncommon dice. Um, and at worst, you shed two fatigues with Peasants Crusades. And there aren't any other um, Age of Crusade boards that will clean up your Warlord with uh, this kind of fatigue abatement, uh, quite like the Crusader board. Okay. And, and Raj, I want you to know, like for the purposes of uh, uh, your, you know, the show here, mm -hmm. I checked with the Baltic Crusader expert um, in Germany, Kingslayer. He actually was uh, ran them at the World Cup, and I was like, hey, have you ever tried using your Warlord as kind of a beast here with the Troubadour? And he was intrigued enough. He said he wanted to test that. He had not done it, but it wasn't folly, and that uh, while not quite as good as Anglo-Danes, it was worth a run out. So, And I need to run it out myself, by the way. No, yeah, that's that's huge. Yeah, I, I agree. Because yeah. um, actually, I went... You know, I was looking at stuff for the priest, which we'll get into you know, for hero stuff. Then, but there really isn't a lot just for characters or warlords or heroes or anything on these boards. And yeah, just that ability for the dump to fatigue, like that's good. Like, yeah. and then when you think two fatigue equals four wounds, uh, <laughs> right? That's very good. Yeah, that's very good. I like that. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe I'll be seeing, seeing this guy just mowing, Soon. mowing down levees. Like, uh, <laughs> da, 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 da. maybe yeah. we'll see. Okay. Cool. Yeah. I think, I, I think that's a good pick as well. Yeah. The second look, we found it. The one for me was the priest. And so, like I said, I went, just to double check, he's a loyal, so he can benefit from the battle board abilities. And, you know, maybe there's um, different ways having another hero out there could benefit you. But there really wasn't um, anything that I found that he could take advantage of. So it came down to, you know, the rares and which mm -hmm. warbands use the rares. So actually... Right. This one was kind of a, another top three as well. So I was just kind of looking for, like, what can you do with a rare that is, like, completely amazing? You know, because some of them are out there. Um, so with the Pagan Peoples, I think in our last battle report, we saw having mm, the rare is huge. Right, um, yes. And just having multiple rares is so much yeah. better than even just having one. Like, you could do so much more. Um, it just really turns the levy, you know, from being annoying to, you know, they can actually do some serious damage, um, popping the orders plus two attacks for shooting and melee. Um, so the pagan peoples were good. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the the mutts again. I think the mutata wea, and mm -hmm. you specifically mentioned the ability, <laughs> which is you know, we did have a promise in the title. Uh, but yes, promise you, of paradise. If you use a rare on this ability, your unit dies, uh, hopefully, and then every 
enemy unit within a long of that guy takes yeah. a fatigue. So oh. that could be worth um, you know, losing a point of your warband to go invest it in the priest and have this ability. You could build your warrior sizes around it to get a couple more units. I don't know mm-hmm. how I usually like to run them, but um, kind of having a guaranteed... I mean, that would be a real groaner for your opponent. <laughs> uh, it, it's something you really wouldn't even be able to play around it or like avoid it, really, per se. Um, it, it could change how they play, you know, stacking up one side versus the other. or uh, it, It's very tough to work around because that range is so huge. Um, and like you said, right. you put six fatigues down. Right. The the one um the you know f- the one fine print right because okay, my buddy yeah. was like he was holding his head like you know and I said now 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 Brent the thing is it only can work as a defender I can't purposely kamikaze a unit and pop mm-hmm. and fatigue bomb your army so but he still was like okay so great you have a, a one half guard guy there and you have this here and the weird synchronicity you can't quite tell where it's going to work but that works both ways Roger I mean I can spend mm-hmm. a rare and then I roll well and my guy doesn't die when he should have and it's like oh well you just wasted a rare but with the priest you don't mind you reload it mm-hmm. next turn yeah and I think it's kind of go again and kind of build around it with just a little four. Yes. You know, the smallest, most easily killable <laughs> units, uh, you know, maximum width in the way, causing tears. Right. So that one could be good. The yeah. last one I was looking at was actually the Byzantines. And oh. they have run off rares and uncommons, but they make their own rares and uncommons. Now, the problem is there's like a timing issue between when they can do that. So mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes you catch them with their pants down because um, you know they can't, you know, they have great abilities, but they need, you know, they can't get them until next turn. Right. Based off how they rolled or they, right. you, you know, they got greedy or, you know, they popped their abilities too early. So there can be this lull where, um, you know, they don't have the abilities that they have, you know, would like to have. So with the priest, you can kind of smooth, you know, smooth that over and always have at least one of the, I think there's two just really nasty defensive abilities. Um, so you can really smooth over the uh, the pain of that. And what if you need the rare on your turn you have, and you have to roll it like this turn to do the thing you want to do, you can count on it. The Byzantines have enough troops. You don't miss being down a point. You might be looking for an excuse not to paint the last <laughs> four, eight, or 12 models. Yes. Um, and then, so his other ability, you could actually get some mileage out of because you can, if you don't use his ability to change the dice, you can um, take a fatigue off a unit within medium or short, yeah. I think. So yeah. um, this one's nice because like with the Byzantines, you won't necessarily need it because you can um, stack your board in a way and you, you have like, you know, you're working like clockwork. But if, if that's still working for you, you can still use that ability to get rid of some fatigue. So you can like overactivate your archers a little bit. So I think it would, I think it would actually work really well yeah. with the Byzantines yeah. the more that I'm yakking here. I like it. These are solid, dude. Well done. Yeah. So definitely consider the the priest in mm-hmm. uh, those those three there. That's what I came up with. Um, let's round this out with guys we didn't talk about last time. Monty, have you run the fire? The fire throwers? The chuckers? Ooh, no more. No moss. <laughs> I had such a bad V1 experience at an actual tournament that I just refused to ever touch them again. How were you and they did running they them? did bring them right. They, yeah, I ran them. I ran them at the big event um and it was one of those typical saga things where all of my friends I I won all my games. I was smashing everyone. There was no doubt and my confidence was 100% and then I started throwing when you throw the fire, you first need to get a hit. And then if you get a hit, your opponent can 
Um, oh, well, I mean, so if you get a hit and they don't make a save, then they pick up the fatigue. That was the device. But if you throw ones and twos, the guy burns up. And you also have a fatigue on your unit where you threw from. And I just, I, all my guys burned up. All my so, hits yeah. were sloughed off. Version one. It was, it was a disaster in version one. Version two, they took them down a notch. I don't have my book open, but I think, um, I roll. think they have a choice. Yep. Go ahead. Yep. You roll three dice per thrower. If you yep. roll higher than their armor, it's just a casualty outright. So there's no defense dice. Or you could put a fatigue on them. And then if you roll really good, you could kind of mix and match those, those two effects. Right. So it can be hard to hit. So like a heart guard on foot, you need to roll a yeah. six. Yeah, you know, that's, that's tough. who you want to hit. But then, and then just the, you know, the range is medium. Um, I don't think anybody else shoots when these guys are shooting. If you roll a one, right. you remove right. the fire thrower and uh, you could. If you roll more than one one, you can blow up other guys. Now <laughs> with the Byzantines, you can put them in with the levies, which is cool. And then the the Arabic factions can all take them as well, but they go in a unit of warriors. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. What do you? Would you take any of these in the the Arabic factions? No. Yeah. It's just me. I just it's like there's a there's a saying that like if a dog eats a toad, they get so sick they never eat a toad again. I'm not eating this toad. <laughs> just I'm not. Awesome. Well yeah, I think going back to the Byzantines, I mean they you can just throw them in there. I don't think it'll hurt yeah. hurt anything. Yeah. I don't think it'll I don't think you build your battle plan around it, but the uh, the big foot. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna have some big foot spear guys. So you throw these in there, you know, so it doesn't hurt. You know, archers or crossbows. Um, they kind of have a tough time taking things out, anyways. So right, if you can right. shoot first, put a fatigue on them, and roll in with four attacks. I don't know. You, you can have some fun. I, I don't think it'll hurt you. Yeah, no. if, you, if you have three, poor, three or four points of levy, throw these guys on top. I think you could have some fun. But, yeah, not necessarily a great strategic pick, which I think was the point. People don't like, like it when their models get burned alive. With fireballs <laughs> exactly. out of control. Exactly. Uh, so the next one is the Fanatical Pilgrims. Yeah. The infamous... Uh, pilgrims. The, <laughs> these guys are solid. Um, pretty much any, I don't think any anybody that can take these could take them and not not to regret it in the slightest. Obviously, there's extra synergies with the Crusader board, the Levantines, and being able right. to benefit from many of the abilities. Right. Um, now I think some of the you know, obviously, there's the infamous World Cup. Uh, Peter the yes. Hermit. Yes, oh, right, but right. I believe they ruled. Now, is there something with Peter the Hermit? Because I thought yeah, they made like a fact or a decision to allow multiple fanatical pilgrims when necessarily you wouldn't allow that. Or does Peter, does Peter allow that? Right. So I think the event organizers up until the World Cup sometimes limited the number of fanaticals you could take. Mm -hmm. um, but I understand that uh, Studio Tomahawk got the message loud and clear. It was just it was just brutal. There's this machine where they're self-perpetuating motion machines, and they could completely destroy your army in, in three turns. So um, an F, the, the FAQ, which is upcoming, will do something about that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and look at that right now. And actually, the you know something could have been done in the the prior fact um, with the way that they generate saga dice. So basically, everyone you kill will mm -hmm. give you a saga dice. So yep. with the pagan peoples, they said there's an ability to generate saga dice, and you could based off of unit size, you could generate a, a large number, so like seven right. or eight or more. And it was right. fact that you can't benefit from that ability if you don't have the exact number of dice. Um, ah. With the hermit, or not the hermit, 
the pilgrims, it was fact that you don't need the exact number. So you could have right. said, um, you know, if you go in and kill 10, you know, they can't use it because it says, you know, pick a saga dice for every model killed or something. You know, exactly. You, you could look at that wording. You could have decided it that way. So they they clarified it, but clarified it in a way that you know, made them better. So if you just have, you know, they kill five, you only have three saga dice. Well, that's fine. You know, I'll, I'll take the mm -hmm. three. Mm-hmm. Now, Raj, I had one thought, because believe it or not, I was looking at these lads for my uh, Baltic Crusaders. Mm -hmm. There is an FAQ that even though it says uh, when, when they're in their warband, they count as pilgrims for the purposes of the saga abilities. Oh, yeah. it, the, the FAQ says for Levantine. So I can take these with the Baltic Crusaders, but it doesn't unlock... It doesn't let my board flip up top and start using all the pilgrim abilities. So just to find a small bit of uh, a small bit of nuance. And then my thought using them against you was that you're going to be heads up. You know what I'm trying to do, and you're going to just work around these guys. You know they are going to be a plug. They're going to be a wall, but you aren't going to be like you know curse you uh, fanatical pilgrims. You're not going to hand me dice mm -hmm. when you don't have to. That was my hunch. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Um, I, I frankly I wouldn't mind playing against them just to just to see how <laughs> to play against them and kind of you know yeah. see what works or or does it. It'd be very interesting. So, um, yeah, it's up to you. I wouldn't mind yeah. giving it a crack. Yeah, I might very well just avoid them or you know do other things. But if depending on the scenario or something like that, you, know, you guys are raiding. <laughs> The Abbey, you know, bolstering the ranks for the right. the campaign. You need every last <laughs> man. Um, <laughs> exactly. That could be awesome. Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, the interaction with the Baltic board. Okay. Um, is that all of them? Are we leaving out any? Did we talk about the horsemen last time? The Eastern horsemen? I think we did. I think we did. Did. They're good. I can I can say like um, I faced them and they're good. They're they're composite. The re-rolling of ones. My buddy kept throwing ones and then he'd pick them up and roll them and each one seemed to turn into a hit. So I was like, yeah, I don't. These guys are these guys are good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're solid. I think the issue is when you compare them to the turco poles head up. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the turcos sound a little better. Even the the. The Chorney, Klobucky, the Black Hoods, mm -hmm. so that they have a variant where you can kind of give them javelins instead, make them a little bit more melee oriented, but you still want the Turco poles. If if you could take both, I think you would always mm -hmm. take the Turcos. Uh, one thing I was looking through the fact that came up last time was the Sailors. So I'll just reference it now because this is an open question, and okay. I apologize since it wasn't a fact. They can drop their armor by one to gain four attack dice. And the fact clarifies they can do that more than once. Um, wow. Down to a, a minimum of two. So you could do it twice. Um, so if you're fighting nice. these sailors, quickly reduce their armor. If they have fatigue yourself, <laughs> or, uh, or else they'll be doing it themselves. So that would, exactly. Um, that's super cool. That's awesome. I mean, because just to confirm... You know, it says right here I can go from eight to sixteen attacks. <laughs> uh, I'll take that. Oh yeah, so, nice. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think we hit them all. I mean, between I think so. the uh, Ordenstadt and the Pagan Peoples, we could take most of the options. So it was mm -hmm. just a few that we were missing, and I'm really glad that we went back to the other ones. Um, Agree. Yeah, you know, we kind of thought I'm on a little bit more. And uh, we found we found where they could fit in, so so that's really cool. Um, yeah, I think I think that's about it, Monty. Sounds good. Um, you know, at some point, I guess we could probably do something similar with Age of Vikings, but kind of on a Crusades kick. Personally, maybe oh, yeah. right now. <laughs> uh, and then, obviously, probably Hannibal is going to kick into gear at some point. Mm -hmm. I think I'll need some physical games for for that to get my mojo nice. going. And you know, right. they, they've got some merc choices there as well. 
might be yeah. worth diving in. Um, yeah, it was fun going over these. And um, yeah, I think that'll do it for this March episode of Saga nice. Thursday. We'll be back in a month or so. Uh, I might have something before then. I don't know. We'll see. Check back. Uh, thanks, Monty. I'll talk to you thanks, guys later. Guys. Bye-bye. Saga! Bye.